guys and welcome back to another uh, Yocho video today we are going to be reacting to some more horror videos yay oh yeah by the way after our last video we're recording it after after like like 10 like a minute again yeah anyway guys so we're gonna have to do this thing in like three parts or maybe four I don't know. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then can we please you act as some happy animations? No, Jack, I already told you last video. Anyway, it's a straight into it. Horror okay. animations. Yeah, you said you, you, you were going to kill me in the last video. What, what, what oh, it's true. They're, they're, they're true, too. They're true. Dude, dude. I put my car in park and called my boss. I asked him to reread the address at least three times to make sure I typed it in right, but that checked out. I could tell he was in a really bitchy mood. He told me to at least knock on the door and check it out. He would normally get mad if we took back one pie, but I was afraid of what he would do if I brought back four. I was insanely unnerved, but got out anyway and forced myself to the front door of the building. Oh, I thought that was some... Um, there was yes, no doorbell, well. so I just knocked really hard. I heard nothing and didn't really expect to hear anything. I was extremely disappointed. Not because nobody answered the door, but because, somebody came because I was realizing that it was all a waste of time and gas. I knocked one more time out of desperation. hear some kind of rustling noises from inside of the building. What? It, yeah, it's just the ghost picking up his pizza. I knocked again and yelled that I was the pizza guy. There was silence now. I felt a bit more uncomfortable now than before. But before I could turn around, I noticed something at the window. There was someone looking through the window. I couldn't tell if it was a man or a woman. Okay, that's I creepy. Where their eyes, their eyes were open wider than I knew possible, staring intently at me. I was disturbed enough by this and dropped the pizzas and ran back to my car. The shitty thing wouldn't start until turning the key for the third Ooh. time. Ooh. I drove off the grass and back onto the dirt road, but I felt the car rocking about, shaking and bumping. Something wasn't right. I didn't make it far from the building before I started hearing a sharp, scraping sound coming from outside. There was so much resistance that I couldn't even drive. The car came to a stop. I got out of the car to check what the hell was wrong. A chill ran up my spine as I began to feel like my heart was constantly skipping beats. My tires had been slashed and had completely fallen off the rim. Not just the front, though. All four tires were slashed. I realized somebody did this when I was knocking on the door to that building. Instead of running, I got back in the car and locked the doors. I was okay, so the part where building, everything happened. Practically see it from where I was. If it weren't for the trees, what are you doing, Jack? View. Come here. I dialed nine one one and explained everything to the operator. She told me the cops would be over as soon as possible and that I need to stay hidden. I asked her if it was advisable to stay in the car or run, and she told me it would be best to stay in the car with the door locked. She asked me to stay on the line with her until the cops arrived. My whole body was shaking. Yeah, I get it. In all it. directions, there was nothing but dark, seemingly endless forest. Just I knew it would take forever for the yeah, cops to get there. I was not going to get the paper knife. I'll kill you! Come on, yeah, I got Jack, get back here with the video. Part, is what utterly destroyed me. He's an idiot. It still shakes me to this day. I didn't even look like nobody ever 
has to experience this kind of fear. As I was scanning all the windows, making mm -hmm. sure nobody was outside, I looked in the rearview mirror, and there was the same person. What? The same person I saw at the what? window. Eyes open wider than ever. I could see now that it was a woman. That's just good. I could ever so slightly see a smile begin to spread across her face. I opened my door and full on sprinted into the woods, not caring how much noise I made. I ran until I was out of breath, which didn't take long, and I hid behind a giant log on the ground. What? I tried to cover she my mouth breathing with my hands. Dude, you forgot my pizza. I, I wanted yeah. one extra large pepperoni so pizza. Like hours, yeah. Until I finally heard sirens in the distance. Oh, thank God. I gathered up all the stamina I had left to run all the way back in the direction of the dirt road. Eventually, the glowing red and blue lights came into view. I had never felt better in my life. They were parked in front of my car, investigating with flashlights. I came out yelling at them like a lunatic to help me. I fell to the floor and started to gag, almost throwing up from running so much. They picked me up and began to question me, to which I explained everything to the best of my ability. Wow. One of the two cars drove over to the building, and the two officers began to search the building. They came back with nothing except for a couple of spiky objects. These objects were exactly the same as the ones used to slash my tires. The cops guessed that it was some kind of sick, demented couple, being that I saw the woman. But unfortunately, they were never found. And that still kills me to this day. What? I obviously That's quit weird. my job right after that and started working at a local grocery store. I know that I'll never forget seeing that woman at the back of my car. Oh god. Okay, so this one's the next one is Home Alone. Oh. Oh, these always... I recently moved out, always... and I already have a horror story to tell. Is this the, same the house I moved into yeah, is guess. anything impressive. Yeah, it's it's just a house that's appropriate for one or two people. Okay. I started hearing weird sounds. How much time do you have left on recording? I, I don't know. Oh, it's more. Oh, okay, it's a different question. Eight minutes. Okay. I started hearing it in my bedroom. I was sure there was some kind of animal living in my walls. I just had to figure out how to get rid of The next morning, I didn't even have enough milk. So scary, where were you? Well, that's not scary at all. What not is a fun game, isn't it? Just like yeah. I don't speak my like English. Not for much I, I can watch this one. Don't get out of bed. That's that's when everything happens. Yeah, let's go back to sleep, man. So I was up pretty late, constantly rolling around and flipping the pillow over. Then I eventually started to hear the breathing again. But this time, I was fully awake. And what was real this time? It was coming to my left. I looked to my left at the air vents. The sound was surely coming from the air. Yeah. It was probably just like a rat. Just breathing. Like, like a human. Stress can do that, you know? That's not scary at all. Hunting stories. Okay, everything bad happens in hunting stories, honestly. 
What do you mean? I mean, you kill animals. That's just. I was doing some night hog hunting in the woods near my backyard. I was hiding in the tower I'd built Can about a decade ago. Can you give us something to eat, Twisty? In case anyone's please. wondering, I of course had a night vision scope attachment. I guess I'm what you would consider a hardcore hunter. <laughs> I don't want to These are all different the people. Story prolonging mm -hmm. details. They're just so the same person narrating what they yeah, said to him. I want everyone to know that though I agree this story sounds far-fetched and crazy, it is nothing but the truth. And I in a way actually consider myself lucky that I'll always have such a horrifying story to share. Really? So, while I was sitting in the tower waiting for movement, it finally came. I took aim and found the source. But it wasn't oh. at all a hog. Or any kind of animal I was expecting. It was a person, a man wearing all black, black sweatpants, black shoes, and a black hoodie with the hood over his head. But that wasn't the freakiest part. He was dragging a sack behind him. My heart started racing. I was pretty sure I was witnessing this guy trying to bury a body. I continued to watch him, but then he slowed down. And I swear to God. Looked as if he turned his head up to me. We've got a sniper, the so of the tower shaking in my boots. Yes, I had a gun, but just the idea of using it against a person is horrifying. I lay low, praying to God that he hadn't seen me. It wouldn't make sense if he could, though. It's practically pitch black out here, or at least that was my logic. Well, if what, what if he had a night vision gun? He was just carrying a bunch of dead hogs. Yeah, and what if it was um, night vision goggles? They're not hard to get now. I felt the entire tower vibrate and shake as there were two more steps moving up the ladder. Just kick him off. Just yeah. Hey, bro. <clears throat> yeah. That's my impersonation of hitting someone. But for some reason, whoever was down there decided not to climb all the way up. As I heard them jump back down to the forest ground. That makes sense. Dragging the sack away. I think I stayed frozen like a statue for at least ten minutes before even peeking over the ledge again. The coast seemed clear. I had to get home and warn the police immediately. I hopped over the ledge and descended down the ladder. I turned on my pocket flashlight, which in hindsight was a stupid move considering the situation, and ran back in the direction of my house. I was only able to run for about ten hey, seconds buddy. or so when I heard the rapid, manic footsteps crunching the leaves from behind me. I took a look over my shoulder, and there he was, inches away from my face. I spun around and shot him in the shoulder. He stopped and screamed in agony, and I took that moment to finish my dash to my house. Again, in hindsight, I should have held him hostage somehow, but that doesn't even matter now. I called the police, who showed up within 15 minutes with the whole search squad, and I led them all into the woods to the exact location where I shot him. There was a faint yet noticeable blood trail spilled onto the leaves, which led past the body bag, which the cops seized, and eventually right to the maniac, who was hiding under a log next to a tree. He was arrested and tried for the murder of Jin Quen Sakanaki, a Japanese corner store owner. I don't know the full story behind it, yeah, well, whatever. I'll forget this one for the rest of my life, and I'll also be telling it for the rest of my life. Well, he had it. Well, he had a sniper, so it wasn't, it wasn't like he was gonna die. Make, 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 make a sandwich or get a fizzle. Go I'll on, Jack. Do time. Me and my brother what? snuck out what? past our bedtimes to explore an allegedly haunted house. Down I, the guys, I'm gonna stop for a second. I just need to talk to Jack. Okay, guys, we're back and. Uh, recording time is basically done. Nah, it's not that much. We have a minute left. Brother Luke was only 12. When our parents said goodnight to us, I went to Luke's room, and we took a couple hand-powered flashlights with us, and hopped outside through the window. Luckily, his room was on the first floor. Those hand-powered flashlights worked by constantly pushing in a little trigger that would create light inside the lens. They were noisy as hell, but they were convenient. Once we were outside, we just walked down the block, and in two minutes we were there. It was rumored by all the neighborhood kids and teens that the place was haunted. Everything about it was creepy. The okay, guys. You'll find out what happens in the next video.